The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, every believer being thumbed out as Alekinicates' new spiritual species unto Christ. Bible doctrine has to be communicated to them so that the people should realize the true purpose and the true worth of their life in the time that has been given to him. But certain men who occupy the pulpit, who have made a great name because of their personality or social network, at the same time, not having the true purpose of this word, they have caused really a lot many people to go into error. The things that are happening around what we count, the way they use the doctrines, the way they come up with their thoughts, having not proper authority over the scriptures, not able to understand the proper exegesis, nor able to discern the dispensation clearly, have caused several men, even the present trend of apostasy period in the Christendom, Though we have the completed canon of scripture in our hands, not able to understand why they are preaching the doctrine. I think the time they spend in preparing this is no time at all, because to communicate the truth, the purpose of a pastor teacher demands a lot of time to sit and study. A lot of time for each and every verse, for each and every word, for each and every revolution, what we have in the original language of the scriptures, taking them to go and to understand in depth so that they could not become like a spot and a blame in the epidermis, but rather they could be to the glory of the Lord because it is the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher in communicating the truth. This bona fide gift of a pastor teacher constantly demands on our part of faithful preparation. That's why we have in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. The true purpose that the believer has been given, this great Lord as our salvation, who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The believer has been given the great divine mentor, who is Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And this great divine mentor with which we have been given the completed canon of scripture into our hands, though wrongly translated or rightly translated or having the information in the original languages through ISA as well, so that the one who doesn't know the Hebrew and Greek language to study and write, he has the interlinear scripture which has been translated for him into the English so that each and every word being decoded with the strong numbers or with the B2B lexicon or with the TWOT lexicon or with the Gesenius words, this believer can get the right information provided he has the zeal to search diligently and know so that he can walk uprightly with Christ. Because several times the way these people they are walking around today makes us to realize they are no different from an unbeliever. An unbeliever who doesn't have Christ, he doesn't have any life at all. He is spiritually dead. He is dichotomous in nature. The one who is dichotomous in nature cannot comprehend the spiritual phenomena. To understand or to comprehend the spiritual phenomena, any unbeliever or any member of the human race, number one, have to have an evolution towards Christ. That is faith alone in Christ alone. And the way they have faith alone in Christ alone is what will really make them by the sovereign will of God to become trichotomous.
This is once again the grace ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. This great ministry, what we are going to have in the pre-salvation work, which is a common and efficacious grace, wherewith we cannot have this activated human spirit, but Lord God, the Holy Spirit in return acts in us as an activated human spirit and causes the information and gives us, because when you take that volition to say positive to God's will and to God's grace and to God's plan, when you say you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the privacy of the soul when you're still an unbeliever that is the moment itself the seven ministries of Lord God the Holy Spirit will take in place of you which you can never understand number one common and efficacious grace ministry number two regeneration that is what the second birth the spiritual birth number three the great and most important point many people are having till date much wider speculations about this this number three is the baptismal work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives. This baptismal work, which they think several people not having proper truth, not having proper enlightenment of the subject, not having proper comprehension of the subject with their great personality, with the number of people they're following, with the number of people they have been attracted, with the number of teachings they have been come around, but not having truth of information in the Bible. Because in the original Greek or in the Hebrew, the words which they have been translated may appear the same. For example, in Second Corinthians 11, 13, you have transformed. The same thing in Romans 12, too, you have transformed. But the Greek words are very much different. It will take nearly 35 to 40 words to translate that words into English. For example, when you use in Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13, it meant to say metaschematizoa, the inner intrinsic nature which is not true in purpose, but then too they try to appear as if it is true, which has come from the root, but it doesn't come from the root. That inner intrinsic or the inner intrinsic nature has been totally dead for them, but rather they take the outward appearance and they take the outward link. And whereas when you find in Romans 12, 2, you have metamorphomai which meant to say it will come from the root from the inner nature from the inner intrinsic method but the kjv or any other translation they translate the same even when Micah was being told in 3.6 the way God blames the leaders of the Israel. Why? Because they have been failed to communicate the word of the Lord, which is so great and essential for us to understand. In fact, even when you could find the words for dark, which has been used in Micah 3.11 of in the Hebrew, the codes as well, which have been totally different. For the first dark, when it has been used, it's meant to say chasak, which is meant to say to be dark, to be darkness indicating a curse or a judgment wherewith the vision which has been associated with it is being always taken with the judgment and the same time when it been used for dark again which meant to say kadar q a d a r a sign of sadness a sign of gloomy foul soil turbant with darkness in the soul so that they have been absolutely obscured it is as if it's been a overtone of mourning in fact, when, when they could use for the vision, the great word Chazan, the vision which many people think the way they have been taken place in the same passage of this verb in Acts 12, 5 and 16, 9, which meant to say Chalon, and here we have Chazan, the two being very different. Here the people have a lot of different meaning for the vision, and there they have a lot of different meaning for the vision. Here in Chalon, it meant to say mental sight, vision, or revolution which they could have. But whereas when it been used for other vision in Micah 3.11, it, Micah 3.6, it meant to say these are the people they are using which is Kasam in the Hebrew, and it meant to say it was a pagan divine practically or practicing divination parallel to biblical prophecies which is an attempt to learn the will of God to manipulate the circumstances when our Lord has been using these words is very much specific among them and the way they have been written and they have been translated if there is any other ordinary person in the church who doesn't know how to differentiate this Hebrew or Greek what does he do he thinks vision means the mental vision what he has got in Acts 12 5 or 69 but he never but he will never understand that it is a 
pagan word which meant to say kasham rather than chazan and this kasham meant to say it was a pagan practicing divination which was parallel to biblical prophecy which was an attempt to learn the will of God so that the manipulation of the circumstances can yield them to become a worthwhile person and that is what it is happening today in today's pulpits the way they are getting around not able to differentiate between the word used in Romans 12 2 and 2nd Corinthians 11 13 the word which has been used in the work of Isaiah 3 1 the way they use the words in the Hebrew and which they are not able to understand the difference between Chazon C-H-A-Z-O and, and Kasham will really make them to realize that the vision is the same but never they will understand that the blood get the Holy Spirit when it is used the word Kasam Q-A-S-A-M it meant to say it was a pagan practicing divination which was parallel to biblical prophecy and Lord calls in Micah 3 6 a great curse upon those people who are practicing this so that never in their life they will have this day what is the day the day is the number of lives the time wherewith they have been given to understand to make it to realize that the purpose of the life which meant to say they have to prove the worth of their life while they are still alive in the framework it is a number of period of light which is not darkness at all the same thing when we come back in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 when they are not capable to stand to the law or to the testimony because they are saying as not per the word of the Lord or for his terms which there is to him no light at all no dawn at all says the Hebrew what is this dawn the dawn is a place where they will be having the daylight to begin with the day to begin and to grow into light what is happening to them there is no dawn to them who are not able to understand the word of the Lord wherewith the time in the morning when the first light appears is the dawn and this dawn has been totally gone and when they are not able to understand that they are not able to have this dawn in fact there shall be no morning for them because all are in darkness without the knowledge of Bible doctrine who do not speak and appeal to the revealed Word of God because since these people do not possess the Word of the Lord it is because in it there is no light in them here no light no word that meant to say in the daybreak they don't have anything for them as a morning the morning of life or to begin or to appear to develop or to begin to be understood or to be felt they have been absolutely obscured that's what they have been totally dark and that's the reason dear brethren why the Bible doctrine has to be communicated to the people if you do not have the word of the Lord revealed word of the Lord then you don't have any brightness at all for you in your life you don't have any dawn you don't have any daybreak you don't have any morning and the Bible is very clear to those people when Isaiah was writing to them these are the people they don't have the law or to the testimony because they are saying not as per the word of the Lord and when this is not happening to him there is no dawn that is there is no life there is no day and that is what dear brethren we have the same passage in Micah 3 6 as well wherewith our Lord blames the leaders of the Israel the rulers wherewith they have been given this great information to communicate so that without taking the money without taking the things they have to be pure to the God's word and they need to tell the truth for them but ultimately what did happen they failed to stand for God's word and they started to take bribe and exchange the word of the Lord for a lie because of some handful of barley or for some pieces of bread and with a strong rebuke our Lord tells to them a God blames against the leaders of the Israel that they have been failures to do God's work exactly why I am telling these tapes for you all it is answering back Zachary 
like not a big deal but the point for us to make them to understand what is the fate of you all because you being the church pastor teachers you need to communicate the truth no matter what it comes and then why are you exchanging the glory of the Lord for a lie aren't you prepared to look upon Bible doctrine aren't you interested to know what is the true vision in contrast to the false vision because many people they are coming to the pulpits not able to understand why they are coming to the pulpits what is the reason and the responsibility laid down upon the shoulders of a pastor teacher and why it is only for a male believer many people they come to think that the ministry is for money no ministry is never for money apostle paul told very clearly we are giving to you the spiritual things and we do not expect as a written material things we want you to account for your own fruit or to your own account the fruit of the knowledge of bible doctrine because we have been told this long back before christ could come the 700 years by the great isaiah prophet who told to them if you are not able to stand exactly to the law and to the testimony of the word of the lord then there is no light in you at all therefore light shall be unto you that you shall not have a vision the vision is the oracle or the prophecy for those true prophets who should have been the great leaders for them and direct them in the path they have to go and he said it shall be a dark unto you what is this dark many people fail to understand the dark when it has been mentioned over here it has a meaning for you to be understood as chasak which meant to say dark spreaded which meant to say curse or judgment because it has been impaired vision has been associated with the old age have you ever seen an old man trying to have a look because of his cataract because of his old age do you know how, how can he differentiate no he cannot differentiate that sort of darkness will be associated to those people when Lord uses the word chasak in Micah 3 6 because darkness will be covered unto you because there is no vision and you shall not divine divine is the word which I am telling for you again and again Kasam. this divine is what the people they want to look as vision this divine they are thinking it can lead them no this divine is what they have been totally darkened and the Sun shall go down over the prophets and the day shall be dark over them once again Lord uses the same word the day shall be dark but when we have the translation two times in the KJV dark and dark you cannot differentiate but in the Hebrew you have for the first dark as chasak which meant to say an indictment of a curse or a judgment the second dark when it meant to say Kadar which is a sign of sadness wherewith they have been overtoned with mourning because the darkness of Sun has occurred to them they are foul they are soiled they are turbid they are gloomy they have been absolutely obscured from the plan of God the day of life which they have to be given for them this day has become a dead unto them and the day shall be dark over them the day which has been used is an absolute great word in the Hebrew the day which has been mentioned is yom that meant to say y o m life number of days sometime or the year which lord has clearly mentioned for this so that this day while they are still alive they need to come back and look so that man must prepare the worth of his life in this day so that the framework it is a period of light which is not darkness at all so the darkness in the sense there will be no sadness there will be no gloomy there will be no foul there will be no soil there will be no turbid there will be no darkness there will be not be obscured there will be not having a overtone of morning when they're walking in this day the day is the life wherewith man is proving the worth while he's still alive in this earth the day is what this people should be a testimony to the law and to God's word as revealed by the Lord that this is the word of the Lord and this is what it appeals when there is no word of the Lord there the people have no light no light in the sense no day when there is no day for them the worth of their life is absolutely obscured so when there is no day what will eventually happen to their life their life will become gathered in the vision of that which is not at all a vision as told in chasm because the gather and the chasm go hand in hand they will be having a life of mourning they will be having a life of foulness they will be having a life of turbid and their 
life will be absolutely darkened because of their soul not having doctrine and they will be not able to understand the true plan of God and this chasm they will be working around as a pagan practicing divination which is a parallel to biblical prophecy and they want to look and attempt to learn the will of God by practicing manipulation in their conduct and that is how today we are finding in Christendom when Lord makes you to suffer because for the blessing that is absolutely a different concept and that is not the morning the morning of an overtone is absolutely different the morning of an overtone is what your life doesn't have a meaning and a purpose and a definition you will be living in a life but though the sunlight comes to you every day the real light will not shine upon you as told in Isaiah 61 arise shine the glory of the Lord is rising upon you and this is what we find even in Psalms 89 38 words where it has been told very clearly for the people who walk in the word of the Lord that his seed shall endure forever it's not 38 it's verse 36 and his throne as the sun before me what is this sun dear brethren the sun is not the way that we the people of this earth are enjoying the sun is the plan of God wherewith we need to prove the worth of our lives we have been predestined now in the church age we have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity we share the happiness of Christ we share the sonship of Christ we share the hairship of Christ we are having absolutely everything which we have been predestined to the praise of his glory in his grace as told in Ephesians 1 6 and 1 12 and why are we still at worried not to know the truth though the sunlight has been coming is it worth for you or what though the sunlight has been enduring so that as the sun will come the plan for the people of God who walk under his word Lord's sun will be constantly shining but the one who doesn't walk what does it mean to say they doesn't have the plan of God nor the light of the day the day the worth because they don't have Bible doctrine in them since they do not have Bible doctrine our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ reprimands those leaders as a judgment upon those captivities when they go telling to the point night shall be unto you and shall not have a vision and it shall be a dark unto you that you shall not divine and the Sun shall go down over the prophets and the day shall be dark over them what a fabulous reprimandation given to those leaders to the one who have been in charge as prophets they have been failed as leaders they have been failed as elders they have been failed and when an entire nation goes negative towards Bible doctrine there is no way that you have a sign of recovery dear brethren the sign of recovery demands that once again you need to look for the law and for the testimony and you need to appeal to the revealed word of God as and then existed the Old Testament exegesis these were the words written by Isaiah during the period long back when our Christ could come 700 years back his ministry was being a great ministry to those people and a great blessing to those people but the people did not recognize why maximum amount of darkness maximum amount of this Kadar in their life, maximum amount of gloomy, searching a frantic search of happiness, maximum amount of turbidness, maximum amount of darkness in their soul, maximum amount of mourning, maximum amount of sadness. Why? No word of the Lord in their life to be rejoiced. Philippians 4 6 tells for us through Apostle Paul, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. How can you rejoice? How can you feast? Do you think your feast is in the music? Do you think your feast is in the girlfriend or your boyfriend or for the pleasures of this world? No. The true feast, the true life, the true day, the true sun for you is to do your life worth to God's calling, to prove the worth of your life, to prove the destined time of you in this earth which Lord calls for you so that the period of light which is not darkness at all in you whenever you're out of fellowship in this unique dispensation of the church age you are walking in darkness that's what the word of the Lord tells to us as per the things pertaining the battle going around in the soul whether you opt for the old sin nature or for the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in this unique dispensation of the church age this great unique dispensation of the church age constantly the battle going around which has been intensified in this angelic conflict either you opt to be with, with the word of the Lord or you may not be opt with 
to be under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because, because by your thought, word, or deed, you do sin. And how do you get back? You get back not by paying penance or tithes or by speaking in tongues or X, Y, Z, but rather you get back by a one single method. And that one single method is a grace provision, which is 1 John 1, 9, which is a rebound procedure. This great rebound procedure is being graciously bestowed upon us because we are sinful mankind. And God has been gracious best forward so that we know we are having the privacy of the priesthood in this unique dispensation of the church age this privacy of the priesthood which has been graciously best forward upon the sinful mankind so that we can understand and discern the truth more accurately more clearly and get back into fellowship and know the true purpose so that the life which has been given the day which has been spent upon us that is what yom y o m in the hebrew which meant to say the worth of our life wherewith lord has called that's what you know even Apostle Paul tells for us, walk in the worthy of the vacation wherewith you have been called, and how much worthy we are walking, and how much gain we have been using the grace, or how much vain we are spending the grace, you need to discern it, dear brethren, because every believer has a number of days destined for him in this earth, and Lord knows how to use that wisdom when you pray as psalmist prays, Lord, help me to give wisdom so that I can count the number of my days, and it could become a straight path, not a crooked path, so that that each and every day could be the praise of your glory in his grace today if the day it is gone it is gone tomorrow we cannot get back to this day but today as long as you are having breath it has to be poured down as a libation unto Christ is today's worth given unto Christ is today's work has been done unto Christ is today's purpose has been fulfilled unto Christ because I have been using the grace of the God I have been taking each and every sunlight and daylight I have been taking the good climatic conditions for me to survive in this earth because Lord knows very well how to place this man if Lord would have placed that man on the third or the fourth day of the creation of the renovation work man would have been burned for excess heat but Lord knows when to place him so in the perfect climatic conditions Lord in eternity past designed for us these climatic conditions and he has set us we are enjoying these climatic conditions irrespective of the cataclysmic changes or the catastrophic changes that are happening around but then to what are we doing we are enjoying in it man is so clever if he is having extreme summer if he is having a centigrade of around 54 to 60 he knows how to to get back into the room and on his AC so that he can get back to 28 to 30 degrees centigrade. If it is extreme cold, man knows how to warm up his room by keeping a fire or an instrument which could warm up or room temperature heater. All these things is very much clever enough. So that the point what I want to say, he can adjust to the changes of the climate irrespective of the cataclysmic changes or the catastrophic changes. But why he is maintaining that humility in his body? Why he is maintaining that humidity of his body? So that he can survive. When he is able to survive, that day he cannot waste it. That meant to say, the grace of the Lord, he has been using it properly. That means he has been consuming that grace. You know exactly how the inspiration will happen. The breathing process will happen. It is inhale first, then the exhale. Inhale, if you take 3,000 ounces of this oxygen, you will exhale only 1,500. The remaining 1,500 has been reserved for you so that if you are not able to inhale in the next time, that 1,500 ounces will work out for you again. What does a man have in his breath? He has only oxygen in his nostrils. If there is no oxygen, do you think he can survive by taking carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide or XYZ gases? He requires only oxygen. Exactly the lungs in your soul requires oxygen to survive. The soul which has been there in you, the inner man through the activation of human spirit, requires Bible doctrine. And if there is no Bible doctrine, then there is no purpose of your survival in this earth. So does the soul resident in the body demands the spiritual food every day. As the lungs breathe oxygen, so the Bible doctrine has to be fed to your soul so that the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can in return energize your activated human spirit so that the even activated human spirit can in return transform the things to the soul and get back the things pertaining to correction, number one, in the mentality, the thinking point, in the evolution, which is only feasible to God so that the day and the shining of the light could occur in our lives. Number three, the 
emotion point of view, appreciation to God's word, not speaking in tongues. Number four, your consciousness towards God's word. And number five, having the norms and standards. Dear brethren, when we change these things towards the point of view, and this soul having these five facets, because all sin nature is always present till to the point of death, but it will lose the sovereignty power over us when we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and this is a great truth and a great purpose for which we have been kept alive and this world where we survive is absolutely the pilgrimage tour we have come we are not a permanent residence of this world though we are of this world we do not love the things of this world but rather the only thing what we need to manifest the transformation of the old sin nature so that it is no longer into possession of the power but the spiritual resurrection which we have under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is the ultima, is the ultima source, is the ultima prayer, is the ultima power which has been given for us. And that is the worth of your vacation wherewith you have been called. So that not like fools, but rather wise men, we need to circumspect and get back into the knowledge of Bible doctrine, dear brethren. The more we delay, the more we neglect, the more we are not capable of understanding this simple dogmatical divine truth the more you have been losing the worth of your life wherewith you have been called the praise of his glory in his grace the great praise the great glory but ultimately what is happening today men are not able to understand the day why they have been called to walk in the worthy of his life for the vacation wherewith he has been chosen and the day time that has been given for him the number of days which has been kept alive that he needs to reach to that status quo of maximum glorification unto Christ by passing down the three spiritual adult stages followed by spiritual self-esteem and then by spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity. What a great truth it is, dear brother, that we have. But what we are happening, we are not able to understand. We are not able to comprehend. We are not able to get back. Why? The pastor teachers, the leaders of the church have lost the true purpose and the responsibility upon their shoulders. They are not true to the doctrine of Christ. They are not worthy enough to understand the great words of Lord God Almighty. If they would have really loved, they would have really loved with isagogical, categorical and exegetical exposition in the biblical truth. By any group man who has, who has been one of with the lexicon of Greek. That's what I can be noticed to him in that manner. I have been, I have been known of him. This man, he writes a book. And the conclusion points, because there are four other authors, are miraculous gifts still happening today. That's the book title. And there are four authors. One is OAS. And one is Ronald, one is Saucy, one is uh, Jaffin Robert, some Jaffin Jr., or Ronald, or Samuel. These men, they are four men who have written their viewpoints. And these four men, the way about the spiritual gifts that have been given, they still think, even having a wrong interpretation about the William Kelly and Jane Darby. If the evil things that are happening around because they are meant to say evil, which is cosmos good, when they meant to say in the William Carley, if not with the Jane Darby, they think evil means they will be possessed by demon. And that's a great error of these four authors who have been written and the concluding sermons, which are the conclusion statements which Vaini Grudam gives, maybe he doesn't have proper knowledge about the subject. No believer can be possessed by demand, dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church age. In fact, even the demand even can't even touch. When the Bible is very evidently clear, dogmatically claiming to the truth, this man, they want to sell their books in the Pentecostal crowd. They write these things, telling to the point when Apostle Paul mentioned the angel of lang the language of angel, it meant to say he is speaking to God and it is edifying his soul. I am not able to understand what it is edifying him, what he is speaking about. And by this man they want to still speculate. The angel of language is nothing but the Hebrew which they have been communicated, the Old Testament scriptures, which has a straight citation in the book of Acts. 
and they want to take it and say it is another language and they will want to build up their theological seminaries the point of view with their theological viewpoints to be supported by other authors the vain decide the vain philosophy the vain methods to be popularized in the pentecostal crowds they write these books and an author who has been known good in the lexicon of greek maybe he supports them so that even he can have a share in it the truth what we have been telling for them demands proper study of exegesis when first corinthians 13:8 tells they want to overse it first corinthians 13:8 and they want to go and look in first corinthians 14 speculate you about the spiritual gifts and this man never they will change because they have the lust pattern tested once and the beliefs that have been inculcated into their minds they will never come out and it's a great sad part though they are into the client nation of usa having all the books for them to be properly ordained properly learned once again it reminds for us to tell to them go back to the seminary where you have learned get back the right information and teach the right information provided you have that ministerial gift of a pastor teacher just becoming a writer just becoming an xyz doesn't count in fact even the dallas theological seminary founders they were very chaffer the way he is to write the way he is to speak and that's the great words of authority and i do not know what these things have been written in vainy good names systematic theology i need to have a look at out the man he says i have been given freely downloaded in pdf format it's a great work but we need to look when he supporting these things we need to look what doctrine has written in systematic theology the best books of all time for systematic theology would be dallas levis perry chaffers founder and president theological seminary mr levis perry chaffers the eight volumes the great truth what has been written that will be the best for the systematic theology for any biblical student who is interested to learn the word of the lord provided he has the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher that is most essential and in fact even it is necessary for each and every believer who is who will be called as an ambassador or a witnessing to christ to know this truth and he need to study it day and night so that he needs to know to discern what is right and what is wrong decisions are been made by the one who is an elder for example in our country like india they still follow the marriage procedure to be done by the father because he needs to take the decision whether this boy will be suitable for her or not or she will be suitable for this man or not they don't have the independent decisions like they have in the western still the parent has a hold what is meant to say it meant to say for us kids cannot take decisions bible doctrine when you are still a kid drinking sincere milk and bread and not eating strong meat we have been perfectly mature or been growing to the status of maturity cannot discern what is right and what is wrong that's why they will easily become a prey for such kind of a miraculous gifts which they think they are still into force today which they cannot discern what is right and what is wrong today and as long as this man they are occupying the pulpits it is a great sad to notice why there are not enough men to stand up once again for exegesis and isagogical and categorical study to prepare and to preach true doctrine it takes time every day is a ministerial process for us to study and to come back and tell to you the difference what it is what it is not not to please you all but rather to direct the purpose of your life it is not a great account for me it is not a great reward for me i am here for christ bond slave to do what is the work that is like an unprofitable slave laid down upon my shoulders i need to do it i don't expect anything from you for your reward but rather you can realize the true purpose of your life so that you can glorify my lord to the maximum is the ultimate goal of me to tell to you all the truth and i am putting it free of cost anywhere i go i don't charge for my sermons because this is the principle what i learned from my human mentor robert bunker timmy 
It's God's grace that has been reflecting upon us, and we wish to reflect it. And for the building up of the ministry, and for edifying for a Bible college, and to put the growth, if you are interested, you can, you can voluntarily donate. Not under compulsion, not by force, only to the edification of the complex of Christ's kingdom. And I don't insist on begging money for anyone. Nor I believe that the ministry is for money. My purpose is to do God's will. And how many days I have been kept here alive, Lord has prepared and kept for me the best which my mind can imagine or what it cannot imagine. My provisions have been made the best. The logistical grace supply has been the best. The ordinary room where I survive is the best. Rather than staying in royal, royal mansions, the old cottage is the best. It is better for me to stay in a place where the word of the Lord has been communicated to me. So that in return I can get back to the truth of my Lord. Rather than staying away without my Christ in me, without his word in me, without his light in me. And tell like this Vaini Grudem, the four authors, the wrong things. By fearing the softness of this world. So that some books could be popularized, some books could be sold, some books could be given a great place in the, in the Pentecostal missions. And that Pentecostal missions is what we don't care. Stick for the truth. If you know the original Greek, stick for the truth. Tell dogmatically what are the permanent spiritual gifts after the completion of canon, what we have in our hands. Why do you want to go against the word of the Lord when the word of the Lord has put an end for it? Who are you to open it and tell these are the things that are happening around still? Who are you to speculate about these things? Do you really have the bona fide gift of these things to tell? Are you being faithfully prepared to tell? Or are you seeing the vision of those diviners pagan who came around parallelly for the biblical prophecy to manipulate the things so that the circumstances could be changed? The chasm people. And Lord never left them unpunished. You're playing with the wife of Christ. Lord knows what sort of a beautician he needs to give to beautify his wife, to order his wife. The pastor teacher in return to tell for you in a simple language, if you're getting married to your, a girl or to a woman, if she will be better rather than a girl, you know for the best beauty which she has to go. And she knows the best appearance she needs to appear to you so that you could be pleased. But in this case, Lord's wife is the church. The beauticians are the pastor teachers. The best appearance, the best adoration will be given by the prepared pastor teacher who knows well, who is an expert. So that the wife could be appearing beautiful to the man to whom she is going to get married or to her husband, or to her associate, or to her lover. And I think women can understand this more clearly rather than men. What he's meant to say to become appearing to his soulmate. So that he could be happy with her. Our Christ is our soulmate. He will be happy in us only through the doctrine what he has given to us. Not by any other means, not by any other gimmicks, not by any other tricks. Only doctrine resident in the soul. He has been delighted in. Any other cheap substitutes apart from doctrine, he doesn't have any delight. He loves only the word of the Lord. And as long as there is a deadlock for the word of the Lord and following useless and worthless speculations about the spiritual gifts. Make it sure there is no mourning for you 
You all are walking in darkness because you are not speaking and appealed by the revealed word of God. When there is no light, that meant to say no word, and when there is no word, then there is no daybreak for you all. Because a day for the worthy of the vacation wherewith you have been called, you will never realize. So the baptism of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, followed by the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, filling us so that it could control us, sealing us so that we could be redeemed at the day of redemption, and given us a gift of a spiritual one, the permanent spiritual gifts which are into force, the pastor-teacher gift, evangelist gift, and the pastor-teacher gift is only for a male believer, never for a female. The gift of helps, administration and giving, hospitality, is what they are into force. Speaking in tongues, the temporary defunct spiritual gifts, which are not into force. Like the prophets, the apostles, the miracles, the healings, the tongues, the interpretation of the tongues, the discernment of the spirits. If any miracles that are happening or healings that are happening, it is directly by Lord God the Father to the one who prays for himself, not through a mediator. And that mediation work, this clock getting the credit, really makes them to be obscured from the word of the Lord, and they, and they indulge more to look upon miracles and healings rather than the word of the Lord. That's why the people, they want to speak in tongues as if their edification has been done. Edification is a day-by-day -day process. Though the outward man has been perishing, inward man has to be renewed day-by-day, said Apostle Paul. And how long you want to reject this simple dogmatical truth, dear brethren, that is left to you. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In audibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is simple as the gospel, which meant to say, believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. This eternal life is next to your soul, very simple for your decision, for your faith alone in Christ alone. It is not been forced. It is not compulsory. It is your choice whether you take it or not. It is your free will volition, dear brethren. Faith alone in Christ alone. And whereas for the believers, the mandate is to walk worthy in the day that has been chosen for him. And if there is no day, that meant to say is walking in a false vision. And this chasm will never leave them the truth. That's why we have been told in the dying declaration of Apostle Paul as well, to preach the word for the pastor and by Peter, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and which is more essential, Mamnisco Lord of Doctrine, to remember the truth, to get back into the truth, and to be mindful, spoken by the holy prophets, as well as by the holy apostles. And this pastor teacher, his duty is to Kerusotan Lagan, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, so that they could be for the Diamatra Roma witnesses wherewith they have been called. This great Diamatra Roma witnesses wherewith many people they have been failing to understand is that the indwelling Trinity is our witness, Bible is our witness, which and every word, whether we have taken it and we have been teaching it or not, and the witnesses who hear our doctrine, they are our Diamatra Roma witnesses. If there are no witnesses besides nature, entire angelic host will be our witness, but you need to be like a bond slave and you need to be like an unprofitable slave to do the work wherewith you have been called to do that work and if you're not capable of doing that work lord help you at the judgment seat of christ because if you have the bona fide gift and if you're not doing the work properly lord needs an account for which the grace has been bestowed upon you and if you really have the day the light in you and if you really have the testimony for christ and for the law and if you're walking in it you are really having the daybreak in your life and if not there is no morning of life for you, nor there is dawn for you, and which way you take, you realize. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. For we ask it in the name of King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the bright morning star. In Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, name we pray, Father. Amen.